Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tarot by Hillary, but not live. <laughs> We're doing something a little bit different tonight um, because I have plans when we usually record our broadcast live, um, and it are it's plans that I cannot delay. <laughs> it's basically travel plans that um, need to be sorted out before I do the traveling. Um, I made the mistake, I think, of putting fake eyelashes on um, <laughs> with my glasses. So I have to... These are a pain in the ass. <laughs> they're very easy to put on, but they're more annoying than helpful or cute. Maybe I'll just find like plumping mascara and be done with it. But yeah another pandemic purchase, man. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, I figured that I didn't want to leave you guys hanging and not do an episode at all. So we, I am pre-recording this. So it will launch at a regular time and you are going to be seeing it, um, you know, at a regularly scheduled broadcast time, but I will not be here live to monitor the chat um, or you know, anything like that. And hopefully I can do it for the book of face. I know I can do it for the tube of you. So you will definitely be getting an episode, but there will not be um, the live audience participation interactivity this week. Um, so, you know, you win some, you lose some, it's a compromise, but either way, you're getting a new episode. It's new to you. <laughs> it's just pre-recorded this time around because I didn't want to outright cancel the episode, you know? Anyway, if this is your first time here <laughs> on the broadcast, welcome. My name is Hillary. I am a professional tarot reader, demystifying the mystical, and putting you in touch with the most beautiful of gifts, your own intuition. Because yes, my friends, do not argue with me. You have intuition. I firmly believe that everybody, everybody, everybody has intuition. And we have to train ourselves to be open to that intuition. And that's exactly what this episode is about. Listen, guys, I've been reading um, or rereading The Psychic Pathway by Sonia Choquette, um, which is a workbook for re reawakening the voice of your soul. And in it, it's like, it's like, it's not a hardcover. It's kind of flim not flimsy, but soft cover and it, it very it feels very workbook like and there's definitely exercises in it um this is actually my signed copy that i got um when i attended one of her classes or lectures at the open center in new york city um but i also didn't stand on ceremony and past hillary filled out some of these exercises um and I see exactly where I dropped off <laughs> as well. So um, some of the stuff that I've been reading in this, it, it's good information. And the part that I'm up to right now is, I think it's in chapter, chapter two, week two, chapter two, week two, clearing the path. So basically getting out of your own way and seeing what blockages there are to your intuition. Um, <clears throat> and I have found that it's not that you don't have intuition. Again, that's why I start every episode with everyone has intuition, because that's what I firmly believe. I think that it's not that the intuitive impulses aren't there. It's that we are maybe actively or subconsciously blocking out hearing those in intuitive impulses. Um, so that's kind of like what week two is about, is about um, unearthing your subconscious beliefs of where psychic information comes from and whether or not it's um, in service to God or coming from God or higher self or deity or angels or the universe or wherever you think um, your greater impulses come from or your connective abilities come from, you know, so if there is an inherent belief that was trained into you from 
when you were a child or when you were younger from your religious upbringing that psychics are not real or they're bad or they're charlatans or um, th that information comes from the devil, well, then you're probably going to have a lot of problems connecting to your intuition and connecting to your psychic abilities when you're adult, when you become an adult, because you're thinking back to your programming, your underlying subconscious beliefs that you were taught as a child. So more about that in the main crux of the episode. But I was thinking about that. And um, I don't know if the description fills in here for a pre-recorded, but we're going to roll with it. So the description of this episode is basically writing your or starting a psychic notebook or journal or an intuition journal. Because honestly, we don't think that we're psychic. And sometimes we will use our logical minds and convince ourselves out of psychic beliefs or intuition or coincidences or synchronicity. And I've said this in previous episodes that um, we talk ourselves out of those things. And sometimes we get, we stumble upon the labels um, or stumble over the labels. And we're just like, oh, well, that's not really psychic or that's not really this. And it's just like, well, why the hell not? Like, Many of these things that we consider to be coincidence or deja vu or synchronicity or, you know, happenstance is a form of psychic information or is a form of intuition or is a form of something greater than ourselves. But that is internally or intuitively ours or uniquely ours. So more about that again <laughs> in the main episode so if you're new to the um the i can't say it's a live stream but <laughs> if you're new to these weekly episodes we talk about different metaphysical topics whether it's tarot yes i am a tarot reader that is my main squeeze that's my main jam you can find um my website right down below here tarot by hillary.com that is hillary with one l um and i do do tarot reading and also the emotional freedom technique um aka tapping i am a pr practitioner of that um, so you can find me there if you would like to book um, a specific and personalized reading for you. I have many options available on my website. Um, but the crux of these episodes are about different metaphysical tarot divination topics. And so this particular episode, um, it was not user requested, but it is tangential to some of the viewer requests that I've had in the past. And I feel like in starting off on your own notebook in which you record your psychic impressions and then look back on it, you are creating the evidence for your own psychic ability. Um, and sometimes without evidence, we don't believe something to be true. So we're creating our evidence that solidifies our belief in psychic knowledge and that everyone has it and that everyone can train themselves to be more intuitive. And some of it is getting out of our own way, right? So these episodes are structured in the following ways every week, whether live or not, <laughs> mostly live, not this time around. Um, we cover a different topic, but and that's the meat of the episode. But the bread slices of the episode is I start out with the astrology from the wonderful Astrobiz Digest created by Teresa Reed, aka the Tarot Lady, for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I give you a little taste of that so that um, you can be prepared, not scared, and also to encourage you to sign up for a subscription to the Astro Biz Digest. It's $99 for the year, and you get all of this astrology in layman's terms sent directly to your email inbox. It's fantastic. It is geared towards entrepreneurs and business owners, but I have found it to be very helpful in my personal life. This is the reason why we do it every week. Then we move on to the main topic. Tonight, it's going to be starting your psychic journal, your psychic notebook. And then we end the episode with a weekend forecast, which is either a tarot or an oracle card that I pull to bring you into the weekend, again, prepared, not scared, more aware, um, more in touch with, you know, 
the metaphysical, but also the very, I don't want to say supernatural, because I really think that ESP is natural, not supernatural. It is, it's natural. It's natural. Anyway, so let us get started with the um, Astro Weather from Teresa Reed, aka the Tarot Lady. I'm going to display it here and I'm going to show it up on here too. Just a reminder that it is um, $99 for a subscription and you can check it out by going to um, her main website, which is thetarolady.com and check out on the top navigation should say Astro Biz Digest. So you can find out more information about the Astro Biz Digest and purchase a copy for yourself. So let's get into that. Um, I'm going to take a little sip of my coffee. By the way, I'm recording this at 2.47. Well, I didn't start the episode at 2.47, but it's 2.47 p.m. Eastern Standard Time now as I'm recording this. So, and I'm about to get lipstick stains on my Village Witch mug. Uh, that my bestie got for me because I would always steal hers <laughs> whenever I would go over to her, her house. Um... I, I would go into, I would raid her cupboards. Like, you know, you know, something about best friends where it's just like, my space is your space, your space is my space. And it's just like, get out of the way. I'm going to like, I'm going to pet your cats now. You know, it's just like, where's, where's my son? You know, <laughs> I'm going to take your cat. I'm going to take your favorite mug. I'm going <laughs> to, but that's real. That's real friendship. Anyway, I would always take this mug out of her cupboard or she would give the she would give it to me she what she would make whatever like tea or coffee and she would serve it to me in this mug um so she ended up getting me this mug for i think it was my 40th birthday i don't know um dylan dilly if you're watching the episode i remind me when you got me this mug i think it was my 40th birthday but i love it clearly all right Astro Biz Digest. So um, a couple of transits happening this week, which I like to go over first before I get into the specifics of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, so for the weekly forecast for June 27th to July 3rd of 2022, we have um, Neptune stationing retrograde on the 28th, which has already happened. Um, and also new moon in cancer also on the 28th. So the 28th was uh, quite prolific, quite interesting. So let's talk about what that means. See things as they are when new Neptune stations retrograde on the 28th. Everything is coming out in the open, giving you the ability to make confident decisions. This also means you must be upfront about your policies, boundaries, and business during this time. The more straightforward you are, the fewer problems you'll experience. It's also the right time to question the soul of your business. Are you happy with your work? How does it make you feel to do what you do? Spend some time contemplating this. And by the time Neptune stations direct, you will have the answers you need to stay on your right path. Neptune will be direct on December 3rd. So Neptune stationing retrograde, it's a longer transit. Um, and you'll find that when you have the the outer planets making moves that, you know, these transits don't just happen for days at a time or weeks at a time. They happen for months at a time. So Neptune is retrograde from the 28th of this, of June 28th to December 3rd. So it's a while. Um, the, mo the month an ends on a fantastic note with the new moon in Cancer on the 28th. This lunation is excellent for focusing on security. What will, what will help your business thrive? What will help you thrive? What do you need to feel safe? More money, better client boundaries, ruminate on those questions and then make necessary changes. Set intentions around those topics too. You can learn to do that with New Moon Astrology by Jan Spiller. Lastly, there is no better day to update your home office. Clear the clutter, clutter get new furniture, hang up some pics, paint the walls. Um, Teresa says she didn't wait for her husband to hang up her Tony Soprano picture. She did it herself. So those are the two big um, events, astrological events that are going on this week. So 
are we ready for Friday? I know that I'm not going to get any audience participation because I'm <laughs> recording this, pre-recording this. But I'm just going to presume that the usual suspects are giving me a hell yeah. And we'll continue on for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I am also excited about this because this is going to be a quick episode. <laughs> because of the lack of audience participation because I'm pre-recording it. I'm also trying to act as if <laughs> I have an audience because it makes me feel so uncomfortable pre-recording things now. I am so stilted and weird. Like, it's just, bleh. like, I don't know why I've become so, like, if you had told me three years ago that I would be more comfortable doing lives than doing pre-recordings, I would have called you absolutely insane. Thank you again to Molly Mahoney and the show up, show up with video formerly known as Camera Confidence team, Molly Mahoney, the prepared performer, that whole crew, aces, man. It, you, you were right, you were right. It just takes practice and you just keep on putting yourself out there and you will get comfortable on camera very quickly. Um, highly, highly recommend the prepared performer, Molly Mahoney, if you are looking to become more comfortable on camera, doing live streams, doing, you know, putting yourself out there, being interesting, being, you know, interactive, good stuff. Um, okay, so AstroBiz Digest for Friday, July 1st, 2022. Inspire the masses with a live stream or motivational speech at 1149 a.m. Eastern Standard Time when the moon trines Jupiter. This is the perfect time to be seen and make plenty of noise. Do this right and you'll be the industry leader. Well, I didn't, but that's okay. <laughs> I was in the middle. I was in the middle of a client reading. So um, host a gathering with your team to celebrate a win when the moon is in sextile with Venus at 5.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The vibe is pleasant, perfect for toasting and brainstorming. That's perfect for me and what I have to do <laughs> later on. The reason why this is a pre-recording. <laughs> uh, but... Finish up before 10.14 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when Mars tangles with Pluto, which could lead to arguments and power struggles. The trolls will also be having a field day online. Stay the hell off the internet. Well, that was my plan anyway. Um, power uh, today, Friday, July 1st, 2022 is a power day for Leo and a weekday for Aquarius. Now, before I get into Saturday and Sunday, I'm just going to let you guys know ahead of time, but kind of not ahead of time. I, I don't know. We're getting all timey-wimey with this pre-recording shit. But I am staying the hell off the internet this weekend until I'm done with Stranger Things, um, I guess, volume, volume four, part two. I am staying the hell off the internet. I am in like my messenger app so that I am talking directly with people I am not doing the free for all. I am not going on the twatter. It, it's not happening because poor Mr. Tarot by Hillary has already mentioned something to me. He was just like, yep, something, something came up and it's just like, it's something that I suspected would happen, but it was confirmed. And, I, and I'm just like, oh, hell to the no. I am, mm -mm, mm -mm, nope, 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 hard nope. Okay, Saturday. So if you don't see me around <laughs> on the internets, on the interwebs, on the social media, you know the reason why now. It's not meant to be me inspirated. I'm not avoiding people. I'm avoiding spoilers. <laughs> okay, moving on to Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so Saturday, Mercury trines Saturn at 6.39 a.m. on Saturday, creating the ideal for energy for newsletters, meetings, and any work that requires concentration, such as writing. This lingers all weekend. If you're in the office, you can conquer that to-do list. But Saturday brings tests all day. The moon squares Uranus in the morning and opposes Saturn in the evening when Mercury squares Neptune at 4.53 p.m. What does that mean? Keep to yourself, stay at your desk, avoid people. This is per guys, this is perfect. I didn't even read that before I said that. 
<laughs> I am avoiding spoilers. I am avoiding people. <laughs> so that's Saturday. Sunday fares much better. The moon will be in hardworking Virgo at 8.31 a.m. The best lunation for decluttering, wrangling tasks, cleaning up files, and editing your work. It's also swell for tidying up your home and hosting a small barbecue if you prefer. Up to you. Saturday is a power day for Leo and a weekday for Aquarius. And Sunday is a power day for Virgo and a weekday for Pisces. So thank you very much to Teresa Reed, aka the Tarot Lady, for her wonderful Astro Biz Digest. Huge fan of all the work that she does. Um, and if you are interested, please, please sign up for the Astro Biz Digest. I know that she would appreciate it and I know that I would appreciate it. Um, but I give you a little taste, but that's how much it means to me. I have been subscribing to the Astro Biz Digest since she first came out with it. And it's like the one thing that I subscribe to yearly that I have never regretted. And, you know, she just she just over delivers every single time. And if you are wondering um, who to follow or who is a great business example for the metaphysical industry, it is Teresa Reed, hands freaking down. Love, love, love everything that Teresa does. So thank you, Teresa. All right. So moving on to tonight's episode, I didn't get a chance to <laughs> update the title for this episode or update my little lower third, but um, I'm just going to do a quick one right now on the fly. Pick a book. Um, and I'm going to update that. Um, but brief reminder, <laughs> brief reminder, you saw it at the top of the episode and I'm going to say it again and bring, bring out my little bell. Props are fun, by the way. <laughs> they really do. They really do get people's attention and it's, it can be silly. It can be a banana phone or a bell or, you know, a graduation cap. And yeah, this is my graduation cap by the way, from the Gala Darling um, certification, the EFT certification. Pink, baby pink. Love, love, love. I look super cute in it, I'm just going to say. But I have to, um, you know, fix my hair and do everything. Because did you know how large, like, the cappy, not, the, not this part. I'm sure I know that there's a name for this. It's escaping me right now. But did you know like how huge this portion of it is? It's like, that's not sexy. And it says like one size fits all. Not if you have a smaller head. But anyway, 2022 graduate of the Gala Darling Method. Thank you very much. But I love my little, I love my props. I love my props. And it also reminds us not to take life so seriously too. And there are serious things to be concerned about. Like, for example, Roe v. Wade. Not not a happy camper about that. We talked about that in the last live, last Friday, which was actually live live. Um, so, but funnily enough, I didn't end up going for the drink that I said I was going to go for. So I was more concerned with, um, I think we watched Clone Wars right after I was done with the episode. I don't know. There are things to be concerned about. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, you know, gloss over these serious things, but also sometimes you got to have some sacred silliness and not take things too seriously. At the same time, you can have, you can, you can carry all of this, the silliness and the solemn all together in one. It doesn't have to contradict each other. Or even if it does contradict each other, that doesn't mean that you can't feel contradictory feelings at the same time. I know I have. Anyway, Reminder, let me pull up my widget to follow us or follow me. Wait, can I cheat? Oh, that's cute. Little bullhorn there. I like this one. Yeah, I like this one. I'll go with that one. So, as I said at the top of the episode in the little introductory video that I did, um, you know, welcome, like, subscribe, click the, click the bell for notifications, <laughs> do all of that, because we do do these episodes 
every Friday night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, unless otherwise noted. And it's usually live, but not today <laughs> because I am making plans for vacation. We actually have to um, plan out our excursions for the different ports of call that we're going on for vacation at the end of the month. And if we don't, if we don't pay for it now, if we don't book it now and pay for it now, it's not happening and things fill up very quickly. So that's the reason it, that's the behind the scenes reason why it's not a live episode tonight. And I'm following my intuitive impulses, <laughs> which again, we're, we're going to talk about, um, to at least record something for you guys, even if it's not live. So even my sister, it was really nice because my sister was just like, I thought, oh, doesn't that conflict with your live stream? So she's like memorized it, which is nice, which is nice. And some of you know that like, despite my mom <laughs> knowing or me telling her all the time, like, mom, I, I'm doing my live stream. I do it every Friday night, 6.30 PM Eastern Standard Time, every Friday night. Like, why is it you're always called? Like, some of you have witnessed that. You have witnessed that when I've been sitting in my living room right next to my phone and she calls a landline and I'm just like, mom, <laughs> you get the behind the scenes of, you know, mother daughter dynamic, mom, gotta go. Okay. I gotta go. Okay. Okay. I'm hanging up now. I'm hanging up now. <laughs> so it was really nice for my sister to be like, Does, doesn't that conflict with your live stream? Like, is that okay? And I'm just like, this is more important. Like if we don't, iron this out now, we're not going to be able to go on some of the excursions or the tours that we want to go on. You know, that's more important. And also, I'm not sacrificing one for the other if I'm recording something ahead of time for you guys. So um, also, I do want to mention, like, I'm going to, I know some of you are in the areas that I'm going to. So I'm going to try and reach out to people individually that I know are in those areas just to say, like, even if you don't want to book a reading with me, like, I'd love to be able to meet you in person. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm not going to say specific dates on here um, because that would be kind of be weird. But um, we're going to be in Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Iceland, and Ireland. Different ports of call, different dates. I'm not going to say that on the live stream because that would be kind of weird. Um, but if I reach out to you, you know, the reason why it's not me trying to, um, you know, drum up business, but that would be cool. If I read for you in person, if you happen to be in a different country, and I happen to be in the country. <laughs> but also, you know, I'd love to be able to meet some people, um, put faces to names, you know, safely, masked, you know, all that jazz. So um, but I am very much looking forward to this trip. It's a trip that has been many years delayed. So looking forward to it. But that's the reason why it's pre-recorded tonight. So anyway, what I wanted to say is this is the topic for tonight's episode is starting a psychic notebook. Oh, shoot. Did I do the crawler before? I think I did the crawler before. Anyway. Friday nights, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when we usually do this. Please subscribe, click the notifications, bell, follow me, you know, do all the jazz. Whatever platform you watch this these episodes on, we have a ton of archives as well. Uh, if there's a particular topic that you're looking for more information on, like we've been doing this for three years. Three years in August, so I can't believe it, but it's true, three years in August. So there's tons of episodes for your perusal. Um, you can go on to my tube of you or my book of face and search, and you'll probably find be able to find the topic that you want to listen to or have more information on. We've done court cards of the tarot. We've done um, spirit boards, Ouija boards. We've done charm casting. Um, we've done boundaries. There are several episodes on boundaries and setting boundaries. Um, there's EFT. There is at least two episodes on the emotional freedom technique, aka tapping and the tarot, how to combine those two modalities for fantastic personalized tapping session. And those come complete with tapping sessions too, that you can revisit because I have revisited them and that's me facilitating that tapping. And I have gotten tremendous um, 
movement and energy work and healing work out of that. So if that's working for me, it's probably going to work for you too, or it's probably going to be very helpful for you too. Um, even if it's just stress reduction, why not? You know? So long story short, look into the archives, wherever you tune in from, and you might find um, a topic that you wanted more information on. You're just like, oh, Hillary's got an episode on this. That's cool. Okay, cool. Um, and I have been trying to go back through the archives and make table of contents so you can jump to those particular sections of the episodes. Um, because sometimes we do marathon sessions. Sometimes we go for two hours, three hours. Sometimes there's a part one, two, or even a part three of episodes. I know that we did at least a two-part episode on court cards because we got into it. Um, I think we also did two parts for the fives and the sevens of the tarot because that was a, a listener or viewer requested episode where they were having trouble differentiating between the fives and the sevens of the minor arcana of the tarot. Um, and not only just differentiating between the fives and the sevens, but also the fives across the board for cups, pentacles, swords, and wands, and the sevens, you know? And this is something that I say, every tarot card has purpose, you know? And the, there are 78 cards of the tarot, and each of them are meaningful and are supposed to be there. So differentiating between the different energies of the different cards, that can be done by you know, laying out all the fives, laying out all the sevens, laying out the fives and the sevens together and comparing and contrasting. And that's a tip that I give um, if you're having difficulty with any card of the tarot. And sometimes if you have multiple decks, you can do or you can do an online search to find different images from different decks that might bring you a greater understanding of that particular card. So quick, quick tarot tip, tip in there, but there are archives. You can find episodes for a lot of different stuff because we've been doing this for three years. Okay. So point of the episode for tonight or the crux or the topic of the episode for tonight is starting a psychic notebook. And here's the reason why I want to encourage you to start a psychic notebook if you haven't already. And also what, what a psychic notebook is and why it's important. Why is it important that we record some of our impulses? Now, I said a little bit about this at the top of the episode where it's just like, it's evidence. It's all, you're creating your own evidence for your own intuition and for your psychic abilities. Because like I say, I say this at the start of every episode. I say this at the end of every episode. You are intuitive. I believe everyone has intuition. We just got to get it out of our own way. That's a big portion of it. So, um, and also I do want to recommend if you're looking to, um, get in touch with your intuitive and psychic abilities, this is a great book to start with the psychic pathway by Sonia Choquette, uh, a workbook for reawakening the voice of your soul. And it really is a, um, a journey and it has different weeks too. So dedicate time. Um, and you don't have to take a lot of time out of your day. Um, but it's almost like the same thing I say with card of the day or tarot card of the day. Daily tarot card pulls are really helpful for um, like touching your deck every day really helps to forge a personal connection with your deck and also gets you more comfortable with the symbology of the tarot and with your own intuitive impulses and how your intuition speaks to you. Um, so the same thing can be said for here, you know, like dedicate some time um, in the pursuit of your deepening your intuitive abilities. Um, so there's several, several chapters and several weeks. So this is, um, this is a 12, this is structured as a 12 week journey. Um, and you just do like the basic principles, how to use this book, um, journey inward, week one, getting ready, week two, clearing the path, week three, tying up loose ends, week four, traveling lightly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to go through the entire table of contents because we're mostly focused on this episode in um, the, the in-between, between, between um, 
week one and week two. Okay. So week one about getting ready is how to meditate and also keeping a psychic journal. So I said notebook, journal, whatever. You're you're keep, you're basically keeping a written record of what you're working on, what your impulses are, what your intuition is saying to you, and then also going back to it because you'll be surprised. You will really be surprised at the things that you intuit. Um, and it becomes evidence for your own versioning and developing psychic abilities. So let me turn to page 30, keeping a psychic journal. Um, this didn't occur to me on page 30 or as I was reading page 30, it actually occurred to me um, in the, at the end of the week two, um, prompts basically because there's prompts in here too there's prompts there's exercises there's anecdotal stories um so pay paying attention um so i actually i actually came to realize this 30 pages later on page 60 again here is okay so hold on um joy is a landmark i'm just gonna quote so page 60 of the psychic pathway, joy is a landmark of the psychic pathway. One very important decision to make if an intellectual block is your problem is to lighten up. <laughs> so again, find that joy. Don't take things so seriously. Make it a game. Um, so lighten up, back off, take it easier and see how everything counts that comes from spirit, however insignificant every subtle magical twist in your day, every thought, every impulse, every notion. It's all psychic. None of the million and one various ways a soul expresses itself from a whisper to a gusting wind, no impulse that comes from the soul should be disqualified. Not one. Um, so I'll flip back to this page because because right after that is here is where your psychic journal comes in handy. So flipping back to page 30, the instructions to keep a psychic journal. Many times throughout this book, <laughs> I will ask you to explore your beliefs and attitudes with journalizing games and exercises. The first thing you'll need is a small portable notebook. Um, I mean, yes, I come and go on this concept, but a lot of people prefer you to keep a notebook and handwrite pen to paper. Um, I disagree slightly on that because it's just like, I don't really care. It doesn't matter to me what you do or how you keep a record as long as you keep a record. So if you're more comfortable keyboarding and typing it into your computer, making yourself a document um, where you record your psychic impulses and impressions, I say that's fine too, as long as you're recording it. So this, the recommendation is to keep a notebook. I say keep a notebook or an online document or an offline document if you're more comfortable with keyboarding. The bigger point of it is to record it. I don't care how you do it. Just record it. Okay. Um, carry this journal. But here's the thing. The Maybe you want to do both. Maybe you want to carry a portable notebook um, and also transfer your notes over to your computer at the end of the day, whatever works for you. But here's the reason why it's a small portable notebook. Carry this journal with you everywhere and record all psychic ac activity as it occurs. This includes all impressions, impulses, and what you might call coincidence. Do not censor, edit, or dismiss anything. Everything counts. I'm going to say that again because that's really important. Do not censor, edit, or dismiss anything. We want to, our logical minds want to, because that's that's our skepticism coming into play. And I think there is room for healthy skepticism, but sometimes we really talk ourselves out of our intuition and we shouldn't. Don't get burned because sometimes, hey, I've got the high priestess card on my, tattooed on me permanently for a reason. It's her, her reverse. I look at her upside down and it is a reminder to me of every time I have not listen to my intuition, I have lived to regret it. And the reason why I haven't listened to my intuition is because I usually logicked or talked myself out of it. Don't censor yourself. Nobody has to see this notebook but you. 
don't censor, edit or dismiss anything. Everything counts. Also, the phrase, as it occurs, is very important. Most of us tend to forget or ignore our psychic impressions. Yes, write it down, write it down in the moment. You will forget. Um, same can be told, said as for a dream journal that you keep by your bedside. It's not going to be helpful to you unless you record things right after you wake up. Keep telling yourself that you're going to remember you're not going to remember. Spoken from experience. <laughs> It is essential in developing psychic ability to become aware of your natural psychic activity occurring now. Don't worry if you can't recall any psychic experiences. Simply be willing to notice and write down any and all unusual, weird, funny, bizarre, coincidental, surprising, odd, indeed, psychic occurrences over the next few days. You are probably so in the habit of ignoring or denying these occurrences Number number one thing I hear from people, I'm not psychic. Oh, that doesn't have, I don't get the, mm, that's not true. You're stuck in the labels. You're probably so in the habit of ignoring or denying these occurrences that you actually block them out. What you need to do at this time is take a fresh and open look at what goes on around and inside of you and pay attention to every little thing. And you can also remember and write down any past psychic experiences you can recall. Again, don't censor or disqualify certain ones because you don't feel they are important enough. Every single psychic impulse, however trivial, counts. Remember as many as you can and write over several days as certain psychic memories return. And try to discern, discern which of these experiences were from your subconscious, telepathy, or a higher plane of, of assistance. Trust your feelings as you try to discern the differences among various types of psychic activity. This type of concentration and focusing is new to you, so be patient. Allow yourself to muse. Do not force yourself to find the right answer. And let it be fun to notice. Again, that sense of play is so important. Um, they have been occurring all along in your life, just below your present level of awareness. Again, that quote, um, that quote of making the subconscious conscious from um, Young, it's not exact, it's, that, it's a paraphrasing from, um, from C.G. Young. Um, C.G., C.J. Young. Young, <laughs> J-U-N-G, um, of making the subconscious conscious. And that, that paraphrase is basically, until you make the subconscious conscious, it runs under the surface and it affects your waking life. So you're not going to know that this programming is run, running under the surface until you acknowledge it, until you see it. It's all about making the subconscious conscious. Tarot can help with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they have been occurring all of your life just below your present level of awareness. By recording your experiences, you are gently beginning to expand and broaden your level of awareness. By recording in your psychic journal what occurs in your life over a period of days, you can begin to see how many times intuition pops up and struggles with other influences as it tries to sound off. Like, again, it's trying. It's there. It's there. We're blocking it. It's really about unblocking because I'm telling you it's there. Um, <laughs> by doing this, you will become conscious of the times and ways you stop yourself from really benefiting from the guidance of your higher self. At times, you will be asked the same questions over and over in this workbook. Um, what is exciting is to see how the answers change from week to week. This journal will become your greatest cheerleader as your own documented experiences serve as proof that you are moving ahead on the psychic pathway. Reflection on being psychic will change your life. As you keep a daily journal of feelings and thoughts and even conversations you have about psychic development, you will study your deeply rooted feelings and beliefs about being psychic. Are they supportive or do they need to be changed and in what way? So some of their, some of this uh, is our quizzes that you will do over the life of working through this workbook if you happen to pick it up i would recommend it um about being what does being psychic mean to you and was your mother or father psychic could you openly discuss intuitive feelings in your home or as a kid could you fear, freely share your feelings how about your religious training 
why do you want to be psychic today? Where would you apply your abilities in your life? And you, do you carry any fears about sharing your intuitions with others? Um, and then also there's this whole thing about psychic heebie-jeebies. Many people carry very negative images and ideas about psychics that interfere with their natural development. Make a list of your worst fears about psychics. So a lot of really great questions in here. I'm not going to continue to quote from it because, you know, I don't want to take away from um, Sonia Ch Choquette's work. Um, but I would really strongly recommend that you pick up a copy of this. Um, so some of some of my reflections um, back in, I'm going to assume it's back when this was first published. No, it wasn't back when it was first published. Because <laughs> this originally came out in 1994 and 1995. I was uh, 13 at the time. So I, I didn't get this signed when I was 13. It was in my 20s. So, but this is, um, this is at least 15 years ago, if not longer. Um, so some of my notes about like, what does being psychic mean to mean to me? Um, being strange, able to see and hear more, helping people that don't hear or feel as sensitively, um, that my father was very analytical, um, could you openly discuss intuitive feelings when I was younger? Nope. Mm -mm. No. Um, as a kid, could you fairly share, share your feelings? I did. I did before I started censoring myself because I knew that I was not welcome. <laughs> um, what is your religious training? Um, I don't think my original religion um, was in favor of psychics or they distrusted psychics. And actually, you know, memories are surfing, surfacing about that, where my first uh, Ouija board was as a result of um, the thrift sale that my church would do every year. And there were donations. There were donations to different departments, including like toys, games, sports, um, clothing, um, jewelry, shoes, um, all sorts of things. But um, the games, the toys and sports were usually run... Um, or, or helped with by the kids, um, as well as the carnival outside. But so we would get donations and there would be um, a time like the week before the sale where we would have something called bringing up Sunday, where we would go down to the basement of the church and bring up all of the things to the different places where we were going to display the different departments for the thrift sale. And I remember we had a Ouija board that was donated and they were not going to put it out for sale. So I ended up getting it. <laughs> I ended up having to put like, okay, well, you're going to, you're going to throw it in the garbage anyway. Like I'll take it on the down low. That was my first Ouija board just coming up from reading this. So, um, yeah. Why would you, where would you apply this ability to your life, work, my family relationships, readings? Hey, <laughs> Um, carrying any fears about sharing your intuitions with others, fear that they won't believe me or laugh at me or deny that part of themselves. Um, so yeah, it, like this is, so going back to the reason why I wanted to do this episode. So now you have a jumping off point for starting your psychic notebook, write down any and all impressions or synchronicities as well. Like, oh, you know, oh, I was just thinking about you the other day and you phoned me. That's weird. That's psychic. Write it down. <laughs> Write it down. Don't discount it. Don't discount it. Um, so going back to page 60 of the psychic pathway, again, here's where your psychic journal comes in handy. Every time you have a psychic impulse or experience, write it down, even if you consider it 99% imagination. It won't be long before you are forced to see just how frequently you are psychic and how accurately you are guided. It's an eye opener. Being on this pathway is being in the world differently. It's being able to see beyond appearances into the true relationships between you and your life's experiences, being receptive and aware of subtle guidance. It's being conscious of making choices that further you on your spiritual path and ensure your deeper well being. Intellectual blocks are mostly bad habits, inherited perceptions, and insecure disqualifications. They are usually cured through a sense of humor and of wonder. Again, don't take it all so seriously and of awareness. So if this is your block, laugh, lighten up 
and pay attention at all counts. So really look at your underlying beliefs. Again, tapping can really help with this. Tarot can really help with this as well. Um, yeah, please list three items you knew that would happen and, act, and acted accordingly. Um, coincidences. It was probably just a coincidence, but fill in the blank. It was probably just luck that blank. Um, I'm sure it was imagination, but <laughs> blank, you know, it's a little weird, but I had just decided to blank one blank. I've never had a psychic experience, but again, watch out for those labels. Surprising experience, you know, charting progress. What was the most difficult part in getting started? What was the most surprising experience you had this week? And also, um, don't forget to, um, you know, take some time out for you, meditate, journal, take some deep breaths. Meditation does not have to be hard, but I found it like um, writing down your experiences, meditation, and some form or tool of divination go hand in hand in hand. They really do help each other. Those modalities really do help each other. So that's the episode. That's the reason why, um, you know, some ways that you can start your psychic notebook and add to it some prompts from the psychic pathway that Sonia Choquette recommends. I recommend picking up a copy of that. It really is helpful. Um, and also why, why it's important to start a psychic notebook. It, you're creating evidence of your psychic life because you, my friends, are psychic. I can't believe I haven't done this episode sooner. <laughs> it just makes, it makes sense. <laughs> Let's, if you haven't already started a psychic notebook, this is your permission slip to do so because it really, really, really will help you and give you evidence of your own psychic abilities because yes, my friends, do not argue with me. You have intuition and I'll say it one more time as we wrap up this episode. So thank you all so much for watching this particular topic. Now we're going to do the weekend forecast because I want to make sure you have everything that you need from me that you would normally get in a live show. So, and again, we do this every Friday night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, pre-recorded or live, usually live. So let's do the weekend forecast. Um, I am feeling drawn to the Moonology deck because I just used that um, this morning with a client. So it is close to hand, close to hand and close to heart. Um, now, keep in mind that just because the Moonology um card that comes up is astrological in nature. That doesn't necessarily mean that we are under the effects of that particular card that comes up randomly or not so randomly. Um, so if you are already astrologically inclined, keep in mind the current astrological phenomenon that are going on. And then this just adds to it for a more complete reading. And I don't know if you heard that, but someone's Someone's honking. <laughs> Someone's expressing their displeasure with their horn. All right. Let us shuffle up from the Moonology deck by Yasmin Boland. So it's an Oracle deck. Let me shut the cover again. All right. What do we need to know for this weekend? That's interesting. I'm not going to, I'm going to pick the second one. Okay, cool. <laughs> the first one that came up, came up in the, in the reading that I gave to someone this morning. So um, if you happen to be watching clients of mine that I just read for um, further, further emph emphasis on the first card that came up for you. I'm not going to say what it is. I'm not going to divulge, but further emphasis. Um, it's the, It was the spicier card. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but the card that we are pulling for the weekend forecast from the Moonology deck is Be Bold and Make the First Move, and it is Cardinal Moon. Now, again, 
That is not the astrology that's happening right now. This is the Oracle card that's being pulled right now. So what does be bold and make the first move Cardinal Moon mean? Let's go to the tape. Again, when you're working with Oracle decks, you may need to rely on a guidebook or companion book because Oracle decks are not structured in the same way as a tarot deck. Cardinal Moon is a special moon card. Appearing on page 104 of the guidebook. Okay. Um, now is the time to be bold, bossy even. All right. I, I got no problem being bossy. Take matters into your own hands. Cardinal signs are powerful and self-starting. They're determined and great at organizing. Drawing this card strongly suggests that you're going to need to be all of those things to get your ideal resolution or position in the situation you're asking about. This card may challenge you on how strongly you really want something. All right. Um, if you're worrying about a situation, it is a suggestion to be less passive. Instead, take an assertive stance as you steer events where you want them to go. Speak up for what you want. And if you're serious about sorting things out, you may need to take the lead in some way or to step up as a leader. Um, attuned to the moon, I am taking charge of my destiny. Additional meanings, be bold and follow your heart and your emotions. Avoid recklessness or moving too fast. Just because you're bold doesn't mean you have to move quickly, okay? Be bold, don't be brash. Come into your power, the time for action is now and ask Ganesha, the Hindu elephant god, for help. In astrology, there are three quadru... I'm not going to be able to pronounce this. Quadruplicities. Cardinal, fixed, and mutable. The cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Of course, the Aries girl would pull that or feel very comfortable with the cardinal. <laughs> Uh, remember, we each have all 12 signs in our chart for different parts of our lives. It's just the way the astrological wheel works. There are signs that like to get things started and which are natural leaders. Uh, no matter what, when you draw this card, it's a sign that something new is starting and you quite possibly need to take the lead on it. So take the lead this weekend, folks. Be bold. Make the first move. Be bossy, but do not be brash. This card may challenge you on how strongly you really want something. If you really want something, then you may have to take the lead on it. That's not me saying that. That's the card saying that. Okay. <laughs> so that's the weekend forecast. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. Um, next week, we probably will be live. So reminder, Friday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I thank you all so, so much for watching. Um, and I will catch you again next week. Once again, I am Hillary, professional tarot reader, demystifying the mystical and putting you in touch with the most beautiful of gifts, your own intuition. Because yes, my friends, as we've seen in this episode, you have intuition. You have intuition. Everyone has intuition. You can cultivate it by using or writing up a psychic journal, which we talked about in this episode. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, if you happen to be celebrating the 4th of July, um, have a good one and take care of yourself. Okay. Bye.